Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the sideboard at the Denver StarCityGames.com Standard Open. We're here with Matt Pitzer, 10th place finisher in Kansas City, and I believe, are you still fighting in contention for top eight? I am X1 right now, winning in the next round, in theory. All right, so with one more win, we could be seeing Mono Black Trading Post or Black Market. Black Market. As it has become known on the interwebs uh, in the top eight, which well, I know we're all hoping to see. It's a very unique <laughs> deck. It's really cool. It plays four mana artifact to kill people. So let's talk a little more about that. <laughs> yep. All right, so we already did a live interview earlier, so I'm kind of familiar with the deck list. But let's just run through some of the more unique choices. I want to start with Mimic Bat because we saw it do some really impressive stuff on uh, SCG Live earlier. Mm -hmm. We've seen dueling Mimic Bats a few times today. Why are you on Mimic Bat, man? Uh, Mimic Bat's got a really good matchup, specifically against Nyapod, mm -hmm. which is a deck that I'm semi-weak to if they have a very aggressive draw. And Mimic Bat allows me to like take their Blade Splicer, or take their Hunt Master, or like do something else that's nutty. And be like, and then start gaining two life a turn, keeping tokens, or keep going to my deck, and I can take a Grave Titan or a Worm Coil, and all of a sudden just everything breaks loose, and yeah, and they, they have no answers. So, one of the more unique interactions we saw come up, we saw a couple actually. One of the ones I wanted to point out was mimic batting with a, a Worm Coil engine that you were able to keep your opponent from cloning the Worm Coil engine with your sacrifice outlets. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Obviously, it nets you tokens, so that's already good, but just knowing how to keep your opponent from being able to successfully clone one of your best clone targets. Yeah, obviously. Definitely. Uh, and the other big one, which I didn't even know about when we were watching, was Mimic Bat against Mimic Bat mm -hmm. and how to control who gets which token. I knew level one, which is you want to kill creatures on their turn so that you get first dibs. Mm -hmm. So I, I got that one. But uh, another thing is when multiple creatures die, you can actually imprint each one of them. And because they're considered new objects, once they're going in the graveyard, you, your opponent, will not get to copy. Yep. I didn't know that one. And you did, and it managed to secure you that map, that game, I should say. You yeah, drawing that I've drawn. That that one. That's one of the things that uh, I learned on Magic Online when um, I was... friends. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I learned that on Magic Online when I was playing at Zombies, and I didn't want him to return both draw messengers, so I kept one and then I kept the other, and all of a sudden, neither of them came back, and I thought he was going to have, like... And I realized that when it, enters, when it enters the graveyard again, it creates a new object. So when my opponent played a Thrag Tusk and blocked, I kept his Thrag Tusk, and then I kept my Grave Titan. And he was like, well, don't I get a chance? And then I turned to the judge, judge agreed with me, and it was, and it's one of the things where just the new object, and it, I mean, yeah. it's one of the things you'll learn by practicing with a deck, so. When you think about it, it's actually like pretty similar to, you know, that Doomblade your creature, your Restoration Angel to save it. It's like almost exactly the same in like a logical principle, but you don't really think about it because nope. it's completely different zones, completely different cards, very cool. So. What have you beaten today? I have beaten Esper Spirits, Delver, Green Red, um, Green Red Aggro, Grixis Control, which I did, which I shouldn't win that one <laughs> specifically. Um, can't think of anything else on the top of my head. Oh, uh, and I beat a um, pretty, like a blue white controlish, a little more controlling of a um, Delver deck. Basically, had Delvers, but it didn't play. Um, Geists or Angels, it was more of a control shell afterwards. Okay. It was kind of an interesting round two opponent, so. The Grixis matchup, I imagine, was pretty interesting. I was just talking with Adrian before uh, this round, when I saw that we had been paired against Austin Yost, who yep. we also talked to earlier, and we were wondering how Nicol Bolas would square off against uh, Mind Slaver, <laughs> and who wins in that fight. The thing is, is that um, the, key, the key to that game, for me, is to never let him resolve a Nicol Bolas, or let him keep one in hand, so then I can take his turn, and then Nicol use my own Nicol Bolas shenanigans. But the thing, that's a very tough matchup for me, and I luckily got out of it with some very timely Planeswalkers, which is the best, these are, they're the best cards in the deck. Sure. So. You've also got, let's see, we have the standard Icar Wallspring, Mike Mykoff, Mike 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 Synth, man. There you go. Mike Synth Wallspring split, not that unusual. Your removal suite, however, a lot of rats, I noticed. You've got four Mutilate, that's kind of standard. Two Black Suns in, all right, sure, I'm with you. Two Barter and Bloods. Yep. <laughs> um, Barter and Blood is something that I wanted to be able to take care of a Geist consistently, because Geist is your biggest worrisome card, and Barter and Blood also works as a Wrath Effect in the decks you wanted to. Um, and it automatically costs four mana and kills anything like Titans. It's also very good in the, in the in Wolf Run match because you can take out uh, two Titans with it, when this would t when a Black will take eight mana, this takes four. Sure. It lets you, lets you do more things with the trading post you have, or play a Solemn, or other ridiculous stuff. Yeah. For a man-intensive deck, being able to cheat on a couple spells is yep. very massive. You know, 
I'm personally not the hugest fan of Trading Post, but I am a big fan of Nihil Spellbound, which this deck yes. gets to play to like maximum effect. Yes. And Commander, like there are decks that just fold to recurring it. I'm a, I'm a Blissa Commander player, so my deck is kind of <laughs> like Trading Post, but I don't yeah, run okay. this card. <laughs> <laughs> but Nihil's Spellbound is very powerful in that format, very powerful in Standard as well. Yes, right extremely. Uh, what have you been doing with the Nihil's Spellbound too? Actually, one of my matches today was against Frights. <laughs> and so some good things. Nihil's Spellbomb pretty much destroyed that matchup. Um, Nihil's Spellbomb has been fantastic against both uh, Delver and Blue Red Delver I've played against. It has been fantastic with anything that wants to do anything out of its yard. Because yeah. you wait until they do anything with, with their graveyard and you're just like, in response, I'll stop you. And that really slows and hurts their deck while in fact, it just helps my deck. Yeah. I'll just draw a card, and then I can get it back, and then I can do it again, and I can make sure that they never have access to a full yard. Even doing something as minor as just removing a Jataxian probe when they try to Snapcaster Mage, it's just like, they're down a card and you didn't lose a card. Like, if, if they miss a land drop and they and they draw a Snapcaster and they snap, guess, uh, try to probe you and you get rid of it, you officially slowed them down a turn. And it's, like, that's full value. Yeah. So. Well, your sideboard, some conventional black spells, as we see down here. We've got a little Curse of Death's Hold, some Duresses, Ratchet Bombs are pretty standard sideboard card, I think, for trading, but some people main them. I don't really like that. Clearly, you don't like it either. I don't think that Ratchet Bomb is necessary in the main, especially for, for black, because I have so many rats. Yeah. Ratchet Bomb is really there for a uh, token-based deck where I don't have enough time to get to it. Or, uh, actually, Ratchet Bombs at five and, five and eight are my favorite things to do. <laughs> because I bring them into the control matchup because then I have I have an out to a yeah. Jace, which, if you haven't seen the deck, I don't have many of. Yeah, so. Yeah. Your attackers are really slow against that deck, and they don't have to do much to stop them. So. Nope. No. Nope. Well, we have another Mimic that we've already extolled its virtues enough, I think. We, we get where, where that's going. You have three Vampire Nighthawks, M13 reprint. Got a little press when we saw it again, because it was an okay constructed card. Yep. Seems like an okay constructed card again. Definitely is. Um, comes in, blocks. I brought it in against Grixis Control as a pressure point. Sure. Makes them react, makes them do something. It just It's a card that forces your opponent to make a bad decision. And it like make, it, make a tough decision, maybe not a bad one, but puts them in spots where they have to make a decision. And forcing your opponent to make a decision can always force them to mess up. And, yeah. you, and your job is to capitalize on that mistake. You've also got two Mind Slaver effects. You've got Mind Slaver itself, which is, I mean, it's Mind Slaver. It's Mind Slaver. <laughs> and then you've got Soren Markov, who can Mind Slaver someone. But I get the feeling that's probably not what you're doing with Soren Markov well, most of the time. True, and <laughs> there's two things that Soren can do for you. One is immediately set your opponent to 10, which yep. in some situations you slam him, you have Worm Coiler or Batter Skull, and all of a sudden their clock goes from seven turns to, 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 to two or three turns. The other thing you can do is I can just sit there, pick off a creature, pick off a Planeswalker, pick off your opponent, little by little by little, so you get to turn and you're just like, all right, okay, I guess I'll take your turn. Seems reasonable to me. So you're mostly bringing the Soren in as like a control weapon? Control and uh, against Ramp. Against Ramp, okay, that's a good... That's a nice one for Ramp. They have to do something pretty crazy, like Devil's Play it, and he grows a little faster than they can usually do that. Yep, and I mean, it starts out essentially at 6 loyalty in that matchup. Yep. So, that's a really hard thing for them to kill right away, unless they're swinging a Titan in, and if they're swinging a Titan at it, it means I'm gaining 6 loyalty. Sure. And 8, essentially, because I will have gained 2. So it's really good in that situation. And, like, and it basically is a second Mind Slaver effect. Uh, I, I like it only because people like to say Memory Side Mind Slaver once I've done it to them once. Because once you take some, all of somebody's turns, they don't like you very much anymore. <laughs> so they'll do everything to make sure it doesn't happen again. So uh, Soren's a good way to all, I mean, it's only Planeswalker they have to deal with, and Planeswalker's just, like, they're the ultimate value in this deck. It's really it's really good for you, and so Soren's just been really good. I, I don't know, I wouldn't cut him still. He's still a great, great as a sure. one-off, so. All right, well, I think we've pretty thoroughly covered Black Market here, man. Yep. You've got one more round to go. If you win it, we might just be seeing you in top eight. So Sounds good. I'm going to wish you good luck, and thanks Thank for coming. Thank you. In.